Hello, my name is Daniel Caligan. Welcome to this second lecture on the syntax of classical Armenian. In this session, we will look at how Armenian encodes grammatical and semantic roles, especially where it deviates from the canonical nominative accusative type, and how valency increasing and decreasing operations work. As a nearly canonical nominative accusative language with basic SVO word order, Armenian uses the nominative to mark A and S and the accusative to mark O. But there are two constructions which deviate from this pattern in that they use the genitive and the dative respectively to mark the subject. First, the construction with the participle and the perfect. Armenian has a verbal participle in eyal denoting a present state, which in most cases is due to a preceding change of state, such as nestial sitting, the participle of nestim to sit down, bekial broken from bekanem to break. Um, in combination with the present and imperfect tense uh, of the copula, the participle forms the perfect and pluperfect tense respectively. So uh, for example, bekial e, Bekial air. Here we have uh, the participle of uh, break, bekanem, uh, and the two forms of the copula in the present and in the imperfect, and the combination of these things then gives us the perfect and the pluperfect tense. As for case marking, with intransitive verbs, subjects are marked for nominative. So, for example, hasanem to arrive, uh, an intransitive verb. And in the perfect, we have na hasayal e, so he or she has arrived. So here we have the nominative marked uh, for the subject. The same is true in the plural, of course. So if we have, for example, no ka, uh, they, that is also the nominative of the pronoun. So no ka hasayal n, of course, with agreement in the verb then, in the copula. The perfect also can have a passive reading, uh, so clauses in which the original object of a transitive verb has been promoted to subject position. So, for example, with berel, to carry, to bring, uh, we find things like na, uh, berial e, which then has a passive reading. And here again, we have the nominative marking na uh, of the pronoun and the participle berial and uh, the copula verb form e na periale, he or she has been brought. And again, if we take the plural, we have no ka, they, perial, uh, again participle, and agreement in the verb in the plural, they have been brought. Now, the interesting uh, thing is that uh, with transitive verbs, uh, both uh, subject and object arguments present, the subject is marked for genitive. Now, agreement on the verb, as we've uh, just seen, is triggered by nominative subjects in Armenian. The copula appears in the default third singular form in the absence of a nominative argument in these cases. So let's have a look at uh, these examples here, how they work. We have Notsa, Berial E is Shishin. They have brought the flask. So we have Notsa, in this case, uh, the pronoun in the genitive, uh, pronoun of the third person, and berial e, so uh, the participle again of bring and the copula, this is uh, the perfect form. And then we have a definite direct object, shish, bottle, flask, uh, marked as definite uh, uh, object with the um, preposition z and the article postposed to it. So the important thing here is the genitive marking that we find on the subject of the phrase. Occasionally, this also occurs uh, in uh, cases with intransitive verbs. This uh, happens from uh, the earliest text, the translation of the Bible onwards. Um, so as for example, in the next subject, uh, the next example, where the participle jorovial doesn't govern any object, but the logical subject is marked for genitive. So this is John 18.2. Bazum angam jorovial er under Yisusi. So here, uh, we have Jesus marked with a genitive uh, case ending in a intransitive clause. So he met and then Ashaker Tafkin Hunderts with his disciples. Um, we can compare this 
to a similar phrase uh, in Matthew 2 4. On this slide, uh, we see Jorovial Zamenain Kahanaya Peterson Hartsaneri Nosane. So he assembled all the archpriests and asked them, where uh, we have uh, here our um, accusative object, Zamanan Kaina Peterson, and Jorovial, our participle, and uh, here there is no uh, overt subject in the sentence, but the subject Herod is recoverable from the preceding context, and there is no genitive marking here. So this may happen too, but it's not that frequent. This non-canonical subject marking uh, may be modeled on the Iranian perfect construction uh, with the agent marked for genitive and the predicate consisting of the participle and optionally the copula, as we find it in Old Persian. So this is an example from the various Bisutun inscription, Imataya mana kirtam. So this is what I did, basically. So we have the demonstrative, these are the things, Taya the relative, which, and then mana, uh, by me, that is the genitive of uh, the personal pronoun, and then a participle, kirtam, uh, of the verb to do, um, making this whole in, uh, thing into a kind of perfect uh, phrase. So this looks quite similar to the um, Armenian construction, of course. Now, the second interesting point where uh, Armenian differs are dative subjects um, in infinitive constructions. Uh, the subject of an infinitive may be marked uh, with a dative case. So let's have a look uh, at these examples in Luke 9.29. Ikal nama yarotis. Um, so as he was praying, so literally while he was standing in prayer. And here the subject of uh, the infinitive kal is marked for dative. So he was praying. Um, in the Greek, of course, this uh, works differently. I've just given you the uh, Greek version for comparison so that you can see that this is not a calc of the Greek construction itself. Um, in Luke 19.14, there's a similar uh, instance, Vojkamin Tagavorel Dema. So we don't want him uh, to be king, where we also have a subject marked for dative and uh, that is the subject of the infinitive, Tagavorel, to be a king. Um, here are two more examples of this. Um, so we have Eis in Kam Gaskutso, I Batslinel Zez, I Ponkutene. So this is the will of God that you abstain from immorality. Uh, so we have here Zez, uh, once more the dative, in this case the second person plural. Um, and uh, in Moses Horinatsi, so a non-translated text, just to show that this is not a feature of Bible translation, for example, we have Yerev Kochel Ezna Bakro, which uh, is also a dative case. Um, formally, this could also be a genitive, but since we have seen the other examples with the uh, personal pronouns, uh, it is rather likely that this also is a dative case. The origins of this, perhaps, uh, surprising uh, construction at first uh, may be cases where the dative object and uh, a uh, infinitive are co-referential. Um, so cases like the following, which allow a reinterpretation of uh, the construction. And uh, so if we look at 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 6, we have Yete an patehe kanoj pokrel. So if it is improper for a woman to cut her hair, um, which could be reinterpreted, uh, so of course this is originally, this belongs to an pate, so it is improper for someone, um, but then we have, of course, the same um, subject, the logical subject of the uh, infinitive is the same uh, NP that is the dative in uh, the main, the matrix clause, and so there's a kind of ambiguity and context such as these may have um, allowed a reinterpretation as a dative subject of an infinitive construction. So if it is improper that somebody do something. Comparable developments have been noted in other languages where similar things seem to have happened. So Slav uh, Slavic is always given as a possible similar case where we have similar constructions. Um, if you look at these examples here, so uh, in, in the Armenian, Yerev Metanel Nama, so it happened that he entered, it happened 
to him, as it were, to enter. And in Old Church Slavonic, we have similar constructions with Bust Vinit Yemu, so it happened that he entered. Um, and in both languages, we see that this is independent from the Greek, uh, because here we have uh, a classical accusative uh, with infinitive construction. Again, it's entertain auton, as we would expect this uh, in Greek to be. Um, Armenian also does have uh, accusative constructions of this type, but uh, it is an open question whether this is just a phenomenon of calking a Greek model, uh, which is possible uh, because the Bible translation is, of course, highly influential in uh, Armenian writing uh, in antiquity. So um, we do find these cases uh, like this one here uh, in Luke 19, Vod Vodjin Kamein Zis Tagavorel. So here we see. Uh, the same phrase, or basically the same phrase that we've just seen in the other examples, uh, but in this case we have an accusative marking here. So, who didn't want me to be king? Um, and not a dative. But, of course, this is just the same as in the Greek. So, at least we cannot be sure that this is not cult from the Greek model. If uh, Armenian has absolute constructions comparable to those of Greek with the genitive or Latin with the ablative case is an open question. Um, there are some examples for genitive absolute uh, constructions uh, in, for example, the historian Morphsis Horinatsi, but uh, this author is very well known to copy Greek constructions uh, because uh, of his view of Greek language and historiography as exemplary. So he uses constructions of this type. Um, uh, here's one example from uh, his history of the Armenians. I so tsik, I space kargets a lot, darna. So when these things had been arranged thus, he returned. Uh, so uh, with a different subject in the absolute construction and then um, a different subject in the main clause. Um, and that looks very much uh, as if it were Greek or it could be a similar construction in the Greek itself. Um, but, of course, this author is known to be very Hellenophile, as it were. Um, there are other examples uh, that one might discuss, so i just give you one more uh, from uh, Jensen's grammar, for example. Uh, again, from the Busandran Padmutyung, um, the collection of epic stories, uh, which is an original Armenian text. So here, Jensen uh, translates um, this uh, phrase, Aregaken mitane lo, kajin jachbarken, so uh, als die Sonne aufging, or rather unterging, waren die Brüder da. So the brothers awaited the setting of the sun, uh, and then they rejoiced in the nourishment sent by the Lord. So the context is uh, that of regular fasting during the day and then breaking the fast after sunset. So this could be uh, an example of such an um, uh, absolute construction, but maybe alternative analyses uh, are not excluded. So one could take uh, the infinitive also as dependent on the predicate, uh, since the verb come, which we will see uh, later again, does occur with genitives elsewhere, denoting the possessor. So, um, for example, in uh, this case uh, here in Luke, uyur kaitse kerakur, so he uh, who has food, so of whom there is, stands literally food. Uh, so it can mark possession, or more generally a relationship, uh, as, uh, as in the other example here. Um, zika, so what is it between us and you, uh, marked for genitive. So maybe uh, in that case uh, as well, in the example that we have seen, uh, the sunset could be the possessor having the brothers, as it were, controlling their behavior. So that's, that's just a possibility. Okay, let's have a look now at agent marking uh, in passives. Usually, uh, the most common way to mark the agent in a passive construction is by the preposition i or yod in front of a vowel and the governed noun in the ablative case. So, here's an example from the Bible, Mukhetin inumani i yordanangit. So, they were baptized by him. Uh, that is John the Baptist in the River Jordan, and we have e nomane, that is the ablative uh, of the personal pronoun. Um, we have in uh, other texts similar cases, dorsovel i kartso kam i tsaravo, for example, um, so to be consumed by hunger or by thirst. Um, so again, uh, e plus ablative marking the agent. 
Um, the alternative construction that Armenian has is just to use the instrumental. This seems to be preferred with non-animate nouns. So as in Luke 8, 37, uh, Ahiv, Metzav, so with great fear, um, Tagnapein, they were pressed. So they were pressed by great fear. That seems to be uh, preferred with non-animate nouns. Partitivity is usually expressed in Armenian also by I plus ablative uh, instead of the genitive found in most other ancient Indo-European languages. Uh, you know this perhaps from Latin, Greek or Sanskrit. So vojvok i notsane, so none of them uh, here with the preposition i and the ablative notsane uh, of the personal, of the pronoun of the third person in the plural. The genitive is not completely excluded. There are examples like i mi uh, navutsen, for example, so into one of the boats, eis uh, henton ployun, so this translates of course the Greek, um, and the question as always is, is this just a calc of the Greek or is it not? But um, it is at least not restricted to the Bible translation itself, so it's not that easy. Um, we have, for example, in Yeznik, uh, an example, i kes darin, into the first half of the age, um, where we have a genitive as well. The genitive is also used after higher numerals, like 100, 1000, 10,000, and uh, here you see two examples for this, hing hazar arans, so 5000 men, or yekus hazar arans, uh, 2000 men. Uh, which is different from the Greek. So uh, probably then Armenian still maintains in some instances the original use of the partitive genitive, although it is being replaced by the I plus ablative uh, construction. Now let's have a look at valency changing strategies. For valency decrease, a typical mechanism are passives, of course. Uh, that is the deletion of the subject and the promotion of the object to subject position. Armenian, as you have seen already in uh, the uh, videos on the verbal morphology, has a middle diathesis that functionally includes things such as unaccusativity. Uh, so, for example, there are verbs like ankanim to fall, busanim to grow, konchim to perish, hotim to smell, uh, reflexivity like uh, aganim to clothe oneself, or passives uh, like berim to be carried. Many verbs uh, have uh, both middle, in, middle forms in e and transitive active forms in e. So you can use uh, e and e to form uh, both agentive, transitive meaning and a passive. So for example, berem to carry, berim to be carried, yandimanem to prove somebody wrong and yandimanem to be proved wrong, be reproached. Uh, but uh, this alternation between e and e present stems is not fully productive. So the relationship between berem I carry and berim I am carried is not applicable to all verbs with e or i. So some verbs only have one of the stems, for example, nestim to sit, sit down, to which there is no nestem to make sit. And conversely, to a verb like nunjem to sleep, an unaccusative e verb, there is no nunjim. And to complicate matters, there are also e verbs that presuppose an agent, such as datim I judge and tanim I bring lead, although they seem to be a smaller group in comparison to e verbs with comparable meaning. Furthermore, and you've heard about that already in the session on morphology, in the present stem of uh, verbs with the suffixes a and u, there is no formal difference uh, of active and passive. So, kardam can mean both call or be called, or ainum can mean take or be taken. And it is only in the aorist stem that a consistent differentiation between active and passive morphology is found. So, in things like as we can see here, Kochiat's called and Kochitsav was called. Since not all e verbs corresponding uh, transitive uh, or causative e verbs, uh, not to all e verbs corresponding transitive or causative e verbs are available for whatever reason, um, that may be, classical Armenian employs other mechanisms for valency increase. So, the transitive causative to nestim is nestutsanem, make sit, uh, from the aorist uh, stem nestuits, made sit. 
The causative is derived, you've heard that in the session on morphology, from the aorist stem. So for example, dynam to turn, and then the aorist third singular is edards, and the causative is dardzutsanem, to turn. Or we have umpem, uh, to drink, and the causative is based on the aorist rb, I drank, hence arbutsanem, to make drink. There are uh, variant suffixes like uzanem, which seems to be used with roots in L. So eluzanem, let go out, from elanem, go up or go out. Uh, we have unkluzanem, devour, galp, von kulanem, puluzanem, make fall, throw, pilanem, to fall. And there's also variant in uzanem, with one verb at least, korusanem, destroy, the causative of konchim, perish. Now, uh, the in the causative of transitive verbs like drink and learn, the cause appears in the dative. So, for example, in John 14:26, na ususce zes zamenain. So he will teach you everything. So here we have the causative uh, with the suffix uh, utsanem that is dissimilated in the subjunctive uh, to us. So ususce aorist subjunctive um, of teach and uh, the object examining everything and uh, the dative of the cause e. or in genesis arbo in sakav mijur so let me drink some water and here we have ins the pronoun of the first person um, marked for dative Beside these morphological means to encode valency alternations classical armenian also has a periphrastic causative with tum to give and uh, here we have dative marking of the recipient and an infinitive, uh, the verbal noun originally, as the direct object. Um, so you have an example here in Matthew 5, Nata Namashanal. So he makes uh, her commit adultery. So literally, he gives to her, and then this is the original object, Shanal to commit adultery. Another example uh, is Khalitz uh, le Celta, Yev Hamertz Hosel. So he gives hearing to the deaf and speaking to the dumb. And uh, this may be an instance where the original construction is still transparent uh, because here we have the verb to give. And then here we have our object, le sel, hearing, that is the uh, verbal noun of. Uh, uh, to hear, which is then the infinitive, and hear the recipient uh, in the dative. So it gives hearing to the deaf and speaking to the dumb, and then this means, of course, he makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. In modern Eastern Armenian, the distribution of these two constructions is, according to uh, Magadumian, such that analytic causatives are formed on predicates uh, that already contain a v-head, whereas the underlying predicates of morphological causatives are single predicates that lack all event information. So they're built to adjectival or stative roots. Um, in a similar fashion, Dumtragut uh, assumes uh, that beside the basic preference of intransitive verbs for the morphological and of transitive verbs for the periphrastic causative, in the case of ambitransitive verbs, so those that can be both transitive and intransitive, the semantic difference between the constructions is such that the morphological causative implies that the causer is also an agent, while in the periphrastic construction the causer is more detached from the caused event, for example by only ordering it without actively taking part in it. Um, this seems to tally uh, with what we see in classical Armenian. Uh, if we compare, besides the examples that we've already seen, further instances in the Gospels. So let's have a look here at Luke uh, 23, 7. Yet tanel es na ar herovdes. So this is the periphrastic causative uh, with tam. Yet is the third singular aorist of to give. And tunnel is the infinitive to lead, so he gave to lead uh, him to Herod. Um, that is, he had him brought to Herod. Um, and uh, the standard interpretation here is probably that uh, Jesus, uh, the, the person uh, Pilate, didn't uh, lead him by hand uh, to um, Herod, uh, so he is more detached from the caused event uh, itself. And uh, 
probably the same uh, is uh, to be understood in the other example here, Ta Joselus um, So he uh, makes people talk big, as it were, uh, make them talk strange things. So this is wine that has this influence. Um, so this is a more detached um, causation event. Since this construction originates from a ditransitive verb meaning give, and uh, since one can frequently see that grammaticalizing constructions retain features and restrictions of the lexical items they stem from, it seems unproblematic to assume that the original feature of transfer of an item to a recipient, implying the loss of possession and control over the item on the part of the donor, is reflected in this periphrastic causative used preferably when the causer doesn't fully control or even take part in the event he causes. Okay, in this session we have seen how Armenian encodes grammatical and semantic roles, where it deviates from the canonical nominative accusative type, and how valency increasing and decreasing operations basically work. Thank you for your attention.